Let's go ahead and jump into the next one. The Nevada Wolfpack. And and some people say that you pronounce this Nevada, uh, but we live in Mississippi, so we're going to say Nevada. That's <laughs> that's the way this is going to go. Um, the Wolfpack, of course, I mean, they, they lost basically everybody that really mattered. Um, everybody that mattered. Yeah. Uh, Ken Wilson. Everybody that mattered. <laughs> so, yeah. It, well, I mean, I, so I put down uh, quarterback Carson Strong, wide receiver Romeo Dabbs, uh, tight end Cole Turner, and then I put head coach Jay Norvell was one of the biggest losses on the roster. Uh, yep. And then I put basically everybody. They lost. Probably the biggest ro- loss. Oh, yes. Norvell, My right? gosh. They lost uh, 8,500 plus snaps to graduation or the draft. And then they lost another 3,000 snaps to transfer. They are number 130 in returning production this year. Number 131 on offense, number 130 on defense. Um, they went 8-5 and five last year. Their post-game win expectancy record last year was 6.47 and 5.53. So you're really looking at about a 6-6 six and six team that went 8-5 uh, you know, and five instead. Right? 6-6 six and six in the regular season, and they ended up going 8-4. and four. Uh, I mean, their their roster strength like is a little better on offense because of some of the transfers that they brought in. They uh, let's let's talk about the offense first. Uh, Shane Illingworth, the quarterback from Oklahoma State, the backup, he is going to be the starting quarterback for first time offensive coordinator Derek Sage. Uh, Sage has been in Nevada doing all kinds of things. Uh, he coached under Chris Alt. He coached under Mike Leach at Washington State. Uh, so you would imagine that you've got an idea of what he what he looks like, right? Um, Arizona wide receiver B.J. Castile should pair well with Jamal Ball and the running back Toa Tau. Ta- Tao, I, I don't even know how to say this name. I've, I've tried it a thousand times. Uh, he was all Mountain West last year, and he did come back at running back. Uh, even if there's not a lot of offensive line help, he's one of those guys that can make people miss. So let, we'll move over to the defense here. Uh, the defensive tackle, Dom Peterson, he's a stud, but there's not a lot else on the defensive line. The linebacker, Josiah Bradley, is good at linebacker, but everything else is wait and see. Like, you got a few key pieces that could be good. And then other than that, yeah, it's just we'll, we'll see what we get. Uh, there are four players with more than 300 snaps returning in the secondary. That's pretty good. They were number 62 in defensive passing success rate allowed. Uh, they've got seven players that had over 150 snaps in the secondary, but they did lose both starting cornerbacks, so that's another wait-and-see situation there. Uh, give me your thoughts on on Nevada and the Wolfpack and uh, and what you think they'll be this year. Uh, the Wolfpack is very much a all-hopes and future uh, situation. I don't think it's going to be good. I think they're going to struggle. I think, thank God, that they get to play New Mexico and UNLV and some of these other schools. I've Got Nevada at five and seven. I and I have, think I was being generous. I think you were as well. I have them at three and nine. Three okay. and nine. I was. I felt like, and I'll tell you this. I I think. All right. So on honest question here then from you, and, and we're maybe cats out of the bag for for the next team. Um, wh- where are we at with UNLV, and is Nevada falling behind them? I think they. They are for pre, this year. Pre damn, they're pretty damn close. If they're not, yes. well, rather they're better than them or worse than them, the argument can be made that they're they're close enough where both those teams ain't anything you want to tell your mom about. I mean, I've got them losing uh, the last game of the year at UNLV. You know, yeah, well, but you so, got that because of that UNLV. You know, uh, no, not so much. Uh, I just, I, I think, I think UNLV is okay. going to be slightly improved. They, they really that that might be true, Gary. And yeah. you might really think that, but your history of how you've done things, like, I, I just, I think if it was at Nevada and you saw it with fresh eyes and we never had this conversation, you'd give that nod to Nevada. Uh, you might be right about that. You might be right. So, I, so. but I will tell you this, I do have them Which losing that game. doesn't matter. So, yeah. uh, they do, yeah, I've got them. I had a hard time with them in, in, in UNLV. I, I basically had both of them winning four <laughs> games and I kind of, Said okay, one of them might get to five, one of them might be at three, but I think they're both bad. I, I can certainly agree with that. My my keys to the season here, um, Ken Wilson uh, has not been an OC or a DC or anything. He's been a position guy, uh, but he did coach under Chris Alt, Mike Leach, and Mario Cristobal. But this is a big leech or a big leap to yeah. uh, to be a head coach. Yeah. 
That's right. So that um, right. key another key here, establish chemistry, get the team on the same page early. There are three winnable games right out of the gate. They can they can play at New Mexico State, Texas State, and Incarnate Word. You get those three, you start to gain a little uh, confidence and whatnot, figure out some right. of the stuff that you got, maybe three and nine or four and eight or whatever uh, is something that can be avoided. But uh, I've got here last, you know, looking at last year's numbers, like none of them matter. Uh, you got to get Shane Illingworth comfortable because behind him is Nate Cox, who was decent as a backup, but uh, he got like 40 something snaps last year and was okay. But like, eh, you know what you got with Illingworth, I think. Um, and so I would get him comfortable. Uh, it's going to be a rough stretch uh, after those first three games. You got at Iowa, at Air Force, Colorado State, at Hawaii, San Diego State, at San Jose State, Boise, Fresno, and at UNLV. Like, that is a rough stretch for anybody that wasn't replacing basically the entire roster. The entire roster and staff. Right, and having a first-year head coach that's never even been a coordinator. Like, yes, yes. All, all of these things combine to being really ugly. Really ugly. Now, let's say something positive here. Uh there's a coach in the SEC that did really well last year that had never been a coordinator either, and that would be Sam Pittman. So maybe you can establish the culture early and get something rolling here, but it, it don't look good. I'll certainly say that. Oh. <laughs> it really don't look good. He, the difference between Sam followed a – now, and I love Sam, and I'm not going to besmirch him, not one iota. But the difference between this and Sam is Sam has – Two OCs and DCs, two coordinators that are head coach material. Also. Oh, most certainly. They they basically have three guys on that team that could run their own program, and that helps. Now that you, helps a lot. You have so, got that right. I love I love Sam, and I love what he is doing. And I, I ain't gonna say one bad thing about him, but to try to say, well, you know, coaches who've never been coordinators before have succeeded in the past. Well, then you better go get other guys that have been head coaches to be on your staff. Agreed. Uh, agreed. Because somebody's going to have to pick up the slack. This shit ain't magic. It ain't going to happen overnight. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.